Okay, my name is Phil Jarrett, um, I'm a surf historian, writer, entrepreneur, uh, general all-round good guy. <laughs> well, um, in my humble opinion, the future of the surf industry is going to depend upon uh, surfers and surf business people showing a lot of ingenuity in a tough market because I think it's the, the adverse conditions are going to be around for a long time. People are going to have to think smart, you know, they're going to have to learn to operate leaner uh, and, uh, and, and, and more sustainably and they're really going to have to be incredibly inventive in small companies rather than conglomerates. Hey, I'm uh, Tim Baker, a surfing writer and uh, I guess co-host of the Salts and Suits panel discussion on the surf industry. Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time for the surf industry. It's obviously going through huge changes. I think there are some big new outside players um, entering the industry who could really change it fundamentally. I feel that the future of the surfing industry will rely less on industry and people being industrious and more about the personal and people with their own personal lives uh, relating to other people on a real human level. What's going to keep the surf industry alive? Going surfing. It's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, the future of the surf industry, well, yeah, it's two parts in my mind. I think that um, strengthening the relationship between surf shops and the manufacturers is key. And I also think that there's got to be a better um, adaptation to technology and embracing technology. Um, I think from a, just a purely surfing point of view, there's no greater time in, in history to be a surfer because there's so many incredible boards you can find in surf shops these days. I think surfing is getting more and more popular. Um, I think the surf school programs are getting more people in the water. Um, everything is getting better like board shorts, wetsuits, surfboards. I think the future of the surf industry will rely on a bit of a U-turn back to the soul. And the evidence is, is that there's a lot more success at the moment concentrating on the one brand but multi-layering your brand with you know, new, new elements, having an environmental department and, um, and just caring for your, your customer and caring for your employees, caring for your people who make your product and just having a stronger responsibility in the, in the blend of your company. For, I, I believe that, that over the next few years you'll see the beginning of small labels again coming through. I mean, the global push with the, the major labels has kind of wiped out all the in, independents. Uh, wiped out the independent agents and also the independent uh, labels. Now I think that where there's a vacuum, things are created. So I think you'll find young people starting to put labels together again and starting to service niche markets. And uh, yeah, I'd be optimistic for that. I mean, it's kind of the big guys can only be so many things. Young people can fill certain grooves and, and get it happening that way. We'll have to remain relevant to the current generations. Uh, that's the way that it's always worked. That's why the the pioneers of this uh, industry were so successful because they were able to remain relevant all through uh, different generations that came through and I think it's important for us to continue to do that. The future of the surf industry um, will rely on collaboration really of, uh, of individuals that all have the passion for the industry uh, working together really towards um, keeping the industry afloat and so on because in the end as we figured out the multinationals aren't necessarily going to keep the industry afloat. It's, a, it's an effort from everyone involved, all surfers that are contributing to their industry and feeding their money back into it and so on. You know, we're seeing that the models that we live with in, in all industries in the world are starting to crumble in certain ways. You know, centralised, massive, machine-like industries are, uh, are not really functioning that great. They're not serving everyone's best interests. So I feel like more localised, region specific future options will be really helpful and really really healthy for, uh, for everyone including uh, other animals, including the spaces we inhabit. The future of the surf industry will rely on you know, good judgement, really good core values, 
uh, really understanding what surfing is and uh, you know portraying it to the world with, with a you know good business acumen and probably needs a little bit of luck too and some good economy and um, and to really foster the surfing culture. Yeah, the future of the surf industry. I think it's going to rely on producing products that allow surfers to continue to break the um, barriers that we see them breaking today. We have seen them break over the, the last 10 years. I want to see them continue breaking those barriers for the next 20 years. My name is Stuart Darcy. I'm a shaper. I've been shaping for 25 years and surfing for 42. And I'm Australian. The surf industry rely on surfers. As the bubble bursts for mainstream fashion, it goes back to the surfers who wear it for function. There's, uh, I think, a lot to learn by, by going more into the quality of things than the quantity of things. So. You know, we're also in the early stages of what everyone calls the Asian century, and up until now, you know, Asia's really just been a manufacturing base for the surf industry, but it's um, looming as a big new consumer market. I think, um, you know, the estimates are in 20 years' time there'll be two billion more middle class uh, Chinese and Indians who will, you know, have some disposable income to spend on their leisure activities. and. Uh, I'm sure the surf companies are looking at that as a, as a big opportunity. So if we think the surf's crowded at Snapper now, um, wait 20 years, it could be, could be really crowded. So yeah, interesting times we live in. So I think that we you know, probably need to develop artificial reefs and um, you know, find ways of opening up other territories um, you know, to find more waves because of the amount of people getting in the water these days. Where you're seeing you know, the, the big um, corporations in the surfing world really having to have a good look at themselves and see what's functioning best for them and for their culture and for this world and, and I think it's an exciting time to see that there isn't just this um, thoughtless motion forward with the idea of progress right now we're having to have a good look at ourselves and see what's working and what isn't and you know though that's tough for some people and tough for some com companies I think it's uh, ultimately a really healthy thing you know, and that growth will come from that. I love the Bleach Festival because, you know, it really showcases all the different arts and cultures and part of the surfing lifestyle and the beach lifestyle. I love my community because it's a great surf town and uh, it's a pretty friendly place and a great place to bring your kids up. Bleach Festival is wonderful. It brings um, our coastal artists to the uh, forefront. To have any sort of gathering where you're celebrating all the different arms and different branches of the surfing tree is a, is a really great step in just continuing to grow and, and prosper as a, as a culture. If you, if you look at all the cultures and all the arts and everything like that, people of the creative essence show so much more of the community. Um, I think festivals like the Bleach Festival are incredibly important for surfing because surfing these days is, is so diverse and I think festivals like this bring people from different countries and different cultures and different areas, they bring them together. I guess in that common bond of, is that all surfers love to ride waves. The revolution's here. How's my day? Well, the day's always good when you're in Coolangatta, right? It's always a good day. As they used to say in the old days when I was growing up, if it's hot in Brisbane, it's cool in Gatta. <laughs>